Thank you. I would li now like to call the October 12th, 2020 Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. Can we please start with the roll call? Yes, Ms. Sue Alberg is absent. Here. Mr. Jeff Allenbogen? Here. Here. Mr. Mano Gangwar? Not here. Ms. Paige Lewis? Not here. Mr. Dan Olson? Here. Mr. Rob, Robert Putum? Here. Thank you. Ms. Katja Stokely? Here. And Aaron Rodriguez, Mr. Council Liaison? Not here. Thank you. Um, anyone wishing to provide public comment during the public invited to be heard must watch the live stream of the meeting for instructions. When the call-in information is displayed on the screen, please call the number displayed, enter the meeting ID, and when asked for your participant ID, press the pound key. Callers will hear confirmation that they have entered the meeting and be told how many people are already participating in the meeting, staff and council included. Callers are placed on hold and muted until they are called on by the last three digits of their phone number, at which time they will be unmuted and invited to speak. Please remember to mute your live stream when you are called upon to speak. Comments are limited to three minutes per person and each speaker will be asked to state their name and address for the record prior to proceeding with their comments. Thank you. Uh, we will now go to the approval of the agenda. I see no reason not to approve the agenda. I move we accept it. Do I have a second? Jeff Ellenbogen seconds. All in favor of approving the agenda, please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. The motion passes. I note that Paige Lewis has joined us. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we will move to the approval of the previous month's minutes. Are there any comments or corrections on September's minutes? Dan? I just want to note for uh, the presentation later on this evening that on page four of the minutes, uh, the um, statement by Gordon Pedro that supported the conservation easement on the newbie um, open space property. So I just wanted to bring that to your tent, everyone's attention. Thank you. Um, I would also note that at some point in the minutes uh, on page four, uh, it's Mr. Pedro, not Mr. Gordon. Any other comments on last month's minutes? I invite a motion to approve last month's minutes. Jeff I Ellen move. Bogan moves. Can I have a second? Rob, are you seconding? I uh, second that. Thank you very much. All in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Uh, Dan and Katya abstain because we were not there. The motion passes. Our next agenda item is public invited to be heard. We are gonna open up the public invited to be heard and the information is being displayed on the screen for those watching at home. Please dial 888-788-0099. This is a toll-free call. When you are prompted, please enter the meeting ID that you see on your screen, 895-1218-1617. We will now wait five minutes. Thank you.
Chair, we have uh, board member Gangwar, which has um, joined the meeting. Thank you. Welcome to the caller that just entered our meeting. Uh, we still have a few minutes here before the meeting will uh, continue and we will open it up for comments. When we're ready to call on you, we will call you out by the last three digits of your telephone and we will ask you to unmute yourself at that time. Please stop listening to the live stream. Uh, you will see a delay between what you're hearing on the live stream and what you're hearing through your telephone. Thank you. Chair, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to let the stream catch up to us, and then we can begin. Thank you, Ms. Wallach. All right. We have one guest that's called in. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. The caller, your phone number ends in 760. Can you unmute yourself? Caller 760, I'm asking you to unmute. There you are. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi. So you, you may want to uh, mute the live stream or you're going to hear me again in your ear. Can you to unmute? I'm hearing twice. Yes. <laughs> I'm hearing the live stream. There you are. So you hear me? I, I yes. hear you, but can you turn the volume down on your live stream, which, whichever device you're... Can you hear me 
again in your ear. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? I I can. <laughs> okay. I, I, we'll give How's this. We'll give us a shot, but I can still hear myself <laughs> in the background. Um, so you I can hear you. Right. So as so you. What am I doing? Um, did you, we'll continue and hopefully you can, can hopefully you can say what you want to say. So please state your name. You have three minutes and your address. Okay. And I can still hear two voices. So should I just start talking? Yes. You're going to hear yourself. Sure how... I, I don't know what device that you're watching us on. What, what device are you watching? I'm watching. I've got a MacBook air, a computer. Okay, you so you need to pause that. Can you press the, the stop button or the, the, the pause button on that video? Oh, hold on. Uh, pause. Okay. So, pause. Okay. Now, is that better? Yes. No. <laughs> Wonderful. So, is again. It? Oh, okay. <laughs> if you okay. Do I start my three minutes now? Yes. Please state your name and address for the record. Okay, my name is Patricia Meyer, Patsy Meyer. I live at 1113 Signature Circle in Longmont. My request is for the uh, Recreation Board to consider building a backboard at the wonderful new tennis center at Quail, right next to the Recreation Center. And my reason for asking for this is that for me, uh, a backboard is essential for anyone to learn the game of tennis. And the ones that we have in the city right now are uh, insufficient in number. The, there are three, one at Carr, where um, the boards are warped a bit, which isn't the worst thing, but if you don't hit the ball correctly against the wall, it will go sideways. The same goes for the one at Collier, which is also made of press board, I believe, and has also worked. The third one that I've seen is at Affolter Park, and that, to me, is the best situation. It is a uh, cement wall, and it's two-sided, and you can have more than one person hitting against the wall, which allows you to not only practice your shots instead of playing with someone who doesn't know how to play, and then you're chasing the ball more than hitting the ball and learning how to, to play. Um, and it's also an opportunity, if someone else is playing, that you could meet somebody else to, to hit with. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, tennis is one of the best sports that's the least expensive but allows you to see your progress through uh, developing the proper strokes so that you can play against somebody else. Is my time up? <laughs> I, don't, I think I have another minute. No, you have one more um, minute. Anyway. Okay, so I mean, I've been playing tennis for a very long time, and uh, I've been here for 10 years. Um, before I lived here, I, before I retired, I uh, coached the high school team. I made it certain that we had a backboard. All of the team members would practice in their spare time to improve their strokes. But I also taught at camps and clinics. And backboards were always a part of the program so that anyone who wanted to on their own time could go and practice their strokes. I mean, tennis is so inexpensive. You can buy a racket at a thrift store. You, you know, you just need tennis shoes. You don't need a ball machine. You don't need, you know, a lot of things that are expensive in other sports. But you don't need a whole team to play and entertain yourself. That's it. Thank you so much, caller. Jeff, do you want to respond at this time? That's really a David question. <laughs> David, do you want to respond at this time? Sure, I'm here. And that, that's, again, I think these meetings are great for um, the board to hear this and staff. Um, we, we have a five-year CIP project list that we go out five years looking at things that we think the community needs. And these are things that we can put into that hopper to look at. We can evaluate that and um, it can get worked into that. And if, if the board 
feels that that's a priority, they can always ask staff to look at that and we can start looking at our, our, our projects. But again, we really are, are laid out for this year and the next five years. And at this point, there, there is nothing in that five-year plan for this, but this is where it starts. Aller, thank you so very much uh, for sharing that concern with us. And uh, once you hang up here on the phone, you can press the play button on your live stream again if you wish to continue to follow the rest of the meeting. Ms. Wallach, do we have any other public waiting? Excuse me, Dan, go ahead. Hi, Patsy. I encourage Patsy to call in because uh, we play tennis together on Saturday mornings. And she's right. I agree. We don't have uh, a backboard. And in fact, Quail would be the perfect place because we have a waiting group of people at Quail most of the time. And so that would give somebody something else to do. I'm thinking of like East Boulder Rec Center where they do have backboards. I mean, they're also handball courts, I guess, officially. Anyway, I think this uh, She I, didn't even occur to me until Patsy brought it up but I'm on board with this. So David, when you're looking for the board to recommend, I'll be that guy. Great, thank you. And Chair, that was the only caller. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, so we will move on now, please, to old business. Do we have any old business? We have no old business. Thank you. Moving on to new business. This is a public hearing regarding the disposition of open space and the Newby Farm conservation easement. So just as we did with public invited to be heard, we will wait for five minutes for the public to call in concerning this agenda item. Ms. Wolick, should I read the instructions again? If you wanna just read the telephone number that's on the screen and the ID, that would be great. Thank you. The number for comments is 1-888-788-0099. This is a toll-free number. The meeting ID is 895-1218-1617. We will now wait five minutes.
Chair, I'm going to stop sharing and wait for the live stream to catch up. Thank you. Okay, it's cleared the live stream and we have no one that has called in. Thank you very much. Dan, uh, I believe you're presenting on the newbie conservation easement. I am, thank you very much. Um, this particular item involves the, uh, the PRAB recommendation uh, to approve a grant of a conservation easement in Groves from the city uh, to the Longmont Conservation District on the newbie Farms open space property. A little bit of history. Um, we closed on this particular parcel back in October of 2018, um, approximately 254 acres. And uh, with water, we spent close to eight and a half million dollars. So um, pretty significant investment. Um, a little bit of history on uh, what we're trying to do here back in um, the spring of 2015, uh, City Council moved. Um, that the open space program with all our fee acquisitions that we present a conservation easement to a holder um, to further protect these lands from um, any further development or opportunities that could come about. Um, very similar to this property, um, the newbie, uh, uh, similar to the newbie property, the Herner, Hartman and French properties, which are immediately to the west of this particular site, um, we granted the Longmont Conservation District um, a, a, an easement on those properties oh, 2018. So um, the Conservation District has reviewed um, the conservation easement language and, and approved that. Um, and because of the disposition of open space granting that uh, a particular uh, land right to another entity were required by ordinance to go through this particular process and, and review um, by the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. And along with that requires the public hearing, which I, I believe we just kind of had. Um, with that being said, um, we're requesting a recommendation from the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to the council for the issuance of this conservation easement uh, minor fiscal impacts would be that we would pay the Longmont Conservation District a sum of $5,000 to monitor this conservation easement in perpetuity. So uh, it's to help cover their costs to monitor this conservation easement over time. So um, as maybe Paige may be able to tell uh, board members, this is relatively inexpensive. Uh, from our perspective, and uh, we do have a very strong working relationship with the Longmont Conservation District. Um, in your packet, there's some of the details of what's included um, and what uh, has been prohibited and allowed on this property. It's strictly an agricultural property. Um, the newbie property possesses conservation values of great importance to the city of Longmont and Weld County. Um, it provides agricultural lands of state and national significance. Um, it provides unique visual corridors um, as well as community buffers. And one of the unique things about one of our these agricultural properties, it does have an opportunity to provide a um, trail corridor between Union Reservoir and St. Vrain State Park. So we do find this to be um, a very unique agricultural property. With um, the approval, if this moves forward. Uh, we will take this then to city council um, with an amended agricultural lease that will reflect the conservation easement. Um, the procedures in, in the process uh, are outlined in um, the memorandum that have been provided for you of the direction from the council, of the public meeting, um, the only comment that we did receive uh, throughout this process was that of Gordon Pedro at last month's meeting. Um, and with that, I believe you have a vicinity map that shows the exact location of that particular property, the Newby Farms property. 
Um, and with that, that ends my presentation and I am happy to address any questions or concerns the board might have. Uh, board members, yes, Dan, go ahead. Uh, a couple of questions, Dan. On your map, I see the blue outline, looks kind of like a figure eight. I don't see a river there. Where was this trail supposed to go? It'll, uh, it will likely run um, just to the north of Will County Road 26. Uh, we are, in the next couple years, the perimeter trail around um, Union Reservoir will be constructed. And what we, with this opportunity, with the Herner open space there and the Newby open space, we have the ability to uh, make a parallel trail corridor off-road north of Weld County Road 26 that would tie then right at the corner of the Newby property um, into St. Vrain State Park. Um, I noticed in the rights, it talks about a trail on the periphery but Correct. it looks like we're now joining a bunch of open spaces together. Do peripheries include the old open space thing or is it all one big one? Is this going to put a limit on you, on us? You know, If we stick Henner, Herner and Newby together, does that mean we can no longer run a trail north-south? No, no, in no, no, between no. Them? Not, not at all. Um, Again, the intention here is really to more of an east-west corridor um, between Union Reservoir and St. Frank State Park. Okay, um, just, again, just bringing point, that up. I wasn't sure if yeah. you glue these together or how if they stay separate. Each one of these is, is managed by uh, different operators. Well, as a matter of fact, the Newbie and the Herner and the French and Hartman open space currently are all under one agricultural operator. However, if for some reason through a master planning effort or um, something of that nature where we wanted to make a trail connection between um, the city of Longmont and Mead, maybe immediately adjacent or uh, within close proximity of Weld County Road 5 would make a great north-south corridor for trail connection between Longmont and Mead. Again, I think we need just to be considerate of, of our agricultural operations and we don't want to fragment those or make agriculture any more difficult by fragmenting um, a, a property that will okay. negatively impact that. But again, this gives us the opportunity to do that. Thank you, Dan. And Dan, any other board members wish to ask Dan any questions or discuss this? Jeff, Happy, Paige, Rob, Manoj. Excellent. Uh, in that case, I would uh, entertain a motion to recommend to City Council, looking for the text, uh, uh, on page eight, um, that this uh, be approved. Uh, does anybody wish to make that motion? I can make that motion. Thank you, Paige. So, um, do you Secretary, need me to restate it? <laughs> Secretary, do you need that read out? It would be the text of number one on page eight of our packet. If you could, Paige, that'd be great. Thank you. Sure. Um, I don't know if it will be the exact text, but um, That's okay. I would move that our board recommend that City Council approve the granting of a conservation easement to the Longmont Conservation District on the Newbie property. Thank you very much, Paige. Can I see a second? Rob is seconding. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, then we'll call the question. All those in favor of recommending the approval of an issuance of a conservation easement to the City Council, please raise your hands. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, item 6B, Boulder County 2021 Open Space and Trails Request. Dan, this is you as well. It is. A busy night for me. Um, this particular item is an item that comes around on an annual basis. 
where Boulder County Parks and Open Space request from municipalities across the county their requests for uh, GIS information, um, open space land acquisitions, and trail connections and corridors. I believe Dan, in Dan I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. Um, board, this is page 12 of your packet. With that being said, um, in your packet, you do have the previous request from 2019. This, re this particular application or um, setup is going to cover that 2021 uh, application process. And in your packet, I've described for you um, three particular requests for uh, open space, um, land acquisitions, and uh, three additional trail projects, some of which we've combined a couple items in, into one. Um, but the idea tonight was really to, you know, run this by you to see your thoughts on these six particular items. And then if you had any other additional items or thoughts or reshuffling of these, because they are um, in order of priority based on staff discussions. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll jump right in unless there are questions before we get started. Hearing none, the first um, open space re request that we are asking for is um, assistance with the land acquisition of the Adam Dairy Farm property, which is located just to the west of St. Vrain State Park, approximately 130 acres. And if I'm not mistaken, there's um, approximately six shares of the oligarchy ditch associated with that property. Um, under a pretty uh, hardy agricultural program. The property has about a three quarters of a mile of the same frame running through that. We anticipate the cost of this property with land and water to be approximately five and a half million dollars. So that is our top priority. Again, we feel that that's an important acquisition um, connection to St. Frain State Park, connection um, to the St. Vrain Greenway, community buffer, all those great things associated with the open space program. Dan, yes. question on this one. Um, when we say we're asking for Boulder County's assistance, are we asking for a specific percentage? Uh, are we asking for loan guarantees? What kind of assistance are we requesting? You know, again, we're going to leave that up to them, depending on what other municipal requests are. But um, in years past, we've asked uh, it, it, for this particular uh, land acquisition to be approximately $2 million. Dan Olson. I noticed, uh, Dan, that in the previous year response to us asking for something in Weld County, they were like, eh, we're, we're Boulder County. I mean, not in so many words. So uh, do we need to ask for the water rights part of it or the, I'm just guess, you know, I don't know, you, you're doing the job, but I wonder if we need to be more specific than, hey, give us some land that's not even in your county. Right. I certainly understand where you're coming from on this one. You know, Boulder County has purchased land in Weld County with us on a number of occasions. They also hold a variety of conservation easements on city land including Sandstone Ranch. So it's just a little bit different when they participate in land acquisitions in Weld County. Generally speaking, those dollars don't come out of their open space um, chest, if you will. It comes out from their general fund. Typically what ends up happening is we, uh, if they participate in that, we end up doing reciprocal conservation easements. They'll hold a, re a conservation easement for the property um, we tend to run a few things by them as we do land management, but historically it's worked great. They've worked well with us in land acquisitions um, in Weld County. Yeah, I think the phrase is Boulder County is willing to consider partnering and making a limited financial commitment in select Weld County properties. That was from last year when we were asking for double six and Olander. Correct. Okay, just you know your business better than I do, maybe, but it makes me nervous to have this be our number one priority. If they say no, never mind on this, are we disappointed we, on the other two requests? Gotcha. Then we jump down to number two. Or Dan, 
Yeah, go ahead, David. I was just going to add in, I, I think the, the piece that um, I think having worked with them over the years, when it says select pieces, the, the county, I think, looks at waterways, as in the St. Brian Creek, as very continuous, not bound by um, jurisdictional boundaries. They don't recognize Well County versus Boulder County. So specifically, we have properties that have the ability to protect riparian corridors and stream corridors. Um, they're much more willing to participate in those. And, and this property does have a significant piece of St. Brain Creek. And if you start looking at it from St. Brain State Park to this piece of property, back to Sandstone Ranch, back to both, we start putting together a significant piece of ownership of public land along the St. Brain Creek. Thank you, David. Um, if there's no other comment from the board, Dan, you want to go on to number two? Jeff, did you have a question? I was hesitating to ask. I, I see the map where it um, there's a circle on the page that kind of shows the general area, but I decided to kind of go Google Maps and look around. And I guess I was wanting a little clarification on what exactly the property is that we're attempting to get. All right, if you, if you look at the map, um, the Adams Farm Property Acquisition Circle. Yep. The, 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 uh, the property name is directly above that parcel. It's 130 acres. Right. I see that. I just wanted to look at it more closely. So I oh, looked, okay. Google Maps. And I'm just wondering, I see St. Rain Park. I, I, guess I don't know the current area well enough to know what are we really saying. Gotcha. And I'm happy to, you know, uh, again, forward you a map, you know, and so that we can zoom in on that. Again, as much as we tried to anticipate that today, it's just very difficult. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. You know, it in matter. order to, to do that. That's why I sort of hesitated. So let's just move okay. on. The second uh, particular uh, parcel that we're asking Boulder County for is, uh, I'm pretty certain you're all very familiar with McLaughlin property that um, we've just negotiated, again, another deal with Boulder County Parks and Open Space. Um, on the east side of Clover Basin Reservoir, there's a 14 acre parcel that's currently for sale. Rather expensive as open space, but we're asking the county if they would be willing to purchase this for us. Um, it would provide us the opportunity for a trailhead on the east side of um, Clover Basin Reservoir directly north of Nelson Road, and it would create a great, another passive recreation opportunity for us with parking. And if that were to come true with that land acquisition, I'm certain we would work closely with our water resources team to capture a recreation lease on Clover Basin Reservoir, very similar to what we've done at Lake McIntosh in, in Union Reservoir. So that's our number two priority. Our third priority is shifting back then again. Um, in previous years, we've asked um, Boulder County to help participate in the uh, acquisition of the Olander property. Recently, the owner separated the water from the land. So in order for us to have a successful agricultural operation and to pursue that acquisition, we would need those shares of water back on that land. So we are asking Boulder County's assistance to make that happen. So that would be the three priorities for our land acquisitions um, in that particular category. Any questions regarding those three? If not, I'll move on. Dan. On the Dorfman property, I'm familiar yes. with that reservoir Oh, yeah, I am going to mute it. Um, that, is this the dam, that road that goes in? It's, that's correct. That would be um, as uh, that the current Clover Basin Reservoir is currently under a recreation lease. And if you right by the dam there, if you make a right hand turn or to the north, that would be the access to the recreation club's uh, general parking area and shade shelters. We believe that by furthering uh, in the acquisition of that 14 acres to the east, it would create you know, better buffer and give us uh, better access and potential trail corridor or connections uh, to Clover ba Basin Reservoir and the- So we're, we all, the city already owns that 
dam and parking and or are we is this part well, of what we're buying or i guess i want to know that we're getting all the way up to the lake so what we what we the lake is very similar to lake mcintosh where the city it's a reservoir company of which the city has 95 percent of the shares of that reservoir company so what we would end up doing then like lake mcintosh like union reservoir we would wreck the rent the recreation lease from the reservoir company. And so we would then have access to the dam, to the lake, okay. provide passive recreation opportunities similar to what we've done at Lake McIntyre. Okay, that, all, that makes sense. Okay, okay. thanks. Yep. Manoj? Oh, sorry. No, I'll wait. Manoj? Is the uh, public allowed to go to Clover Basin Reservoir? No, it's currently leased by a recreation, a private recreation group right now that I do know that they do, you know, some boating and, and those types of activities on the reservoir at this point okay. in time. Yeah, I went there last week. It, it was, uh, there was a lock on the gate. Yeah, it's, it's currently only available to club members. I see. Okay. Uh, David, you're addressing Minoja's question? Yes. And I was going to say, I think it's one of the things that Dan, as he talked about, you know, this acquisition along with the city having that ownership in the the water there that I think long term as we do a management plan that would be our goal then um, is to take back that recreationally so that we can be available for the the residents not just private club members but again that that's going to be down the road as we start putting together the management plan. Got it. Thank you. Jeff? I was just going to comment that I see water ski buoys in there and I wondered is that something we're not talking passive to me means like boats that you paddle not water skiing. Correct. Are we being opposed on this from the club members then? Well, I mean, we, until we own the land and then have access to the reservoir, um, we've not approached the, cl the club at all. But we already know 95% of the water rights, just not the recreation rights. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's, yeah, it, it, it's one and the same. They're all owned by the reservoir company of which the city of Longmont is 95% uh, you know, of the shareholder of that reservoir. So we're really talking about buying property next to the reservoir where we already have a lot of the water. Correct. Okay. Rob Putnam. Yes. You need to unmute yourself, Rob. Rob, did you have a comment? You need to unmute yourself. Yes, I did. I was going to suggest that uh, given my experience at McIntosh Lake with all the boats and the swimming and all that, I was wondering if Clover Basin Reservoir could kind of replace what's going on at McIntosh Lake. I don't know that we would necessarily want to replace McIntosh. Um, it certainly provides an opportunity for dispersed recreation we do know that the McLaughlin property has some pretty significant avian species. I think we would do uh, maybe a number of things that we've done similarly at Lake McIntosh. But with Clover Basin Reservoir, I think we would probably buoy off the western portion of that lake to provide habitat for watchable wildlife, very similar to what we've done at, at McIntosh. But again, the concept is all is that we would have the property, we would have the water, we would have a management plan and we would be able to actively manage um, for passive recreation opportunities without negatively impacting uh, the wildlife in the area. Thank you. Dan Olson. Actually, the history sounds like McIntosh because before the city turned it into a recreation area, it had a motorboat club on it also. And there was a jump in the buoys just like there is at um, Clover Basin. You've mentioned several times McLaughlin, but your map says Dorfman. Well, that's the acquisition is the Dorfman on the east of the reservoirs, the Dorfman property that we would like to acquire. The McLaughlin property is the 70 acres to the west that we just purchased with Boulder County. Got it. Thank you. Uh, in that case, I'd like to go ahead and uh, separate the question into two parts. Uh, the first part is, 
the priority um, ratings of these three requests. Is anyone on the board got any concerns about the prioritization of these three requests to Boulder County? Second, uh, are there any other requests that we uh, wish to recommend that uh, Dan's group consider making to Boulder County? In that case, I'm prepared to entertain a motion that PRAB recommend the approval uh, of this request to Boulder County. Who would like to make that motion? Not you, Dan. You can talk, though. <laughs> you got a question? question for Sorry. you? Yes. Well, again, that's three of the land acquisitions. The other portion. Oh, the, the trails. Trail. Sorry. Three, three trail components. Also. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Please continue. Oh, I'm just clarifying questions and making certain that you understand where we're headed with this. Yeah. No, I... I I actually knew that, but I lost track. Dan Olson? I do notice that the other cities ask for a lot more numbered things. So maybe we should up our number. Got anything else in your back pocket, Dan? I'm certain we can come up with something. <laughs> or maybe this is better. Maybe, I don't, I don't know what the strategy is. You have more experience here. But I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the list at Erie and Lyons and Boulder, and it, it goes on for pages. Well, and, and I can tell you, that the water right alone um, on the Olander property is a little over a million and a half dollars. We're asking for $2 million on um, the uh, Adam Farm Dairy. They're asking for $60,000 an acre for the 14 acres on the Dof Dofman property. So it's, I mean, what we're asking for, I mean, I don't want to be Got greedy it. necessarily, but I we see. love okay. being partners with the county. You know, we've been very successful with the partnerships that we've had, especially, you know, not only the land acquisition, but the trail development stuff, um, items also. Okay, thanks for that background. If okay, I may, Dan, you, you want to go move ahead? on to the trail component? All right. Um, on, on the trail side of things, there's really um, a couple, three priorities that we've listed here. In each of those, there's probably a, a couple elements. If you're familiar with Dry Creek Community Park um, over by um, Silver Creek High School, that trail co connection is pretty much all intact. However, we don't have a connection between the city of Longmont's Dry Creek Community Park and Boulder County's AHI Lagerman Complex. So our request for, there, for that would be a um, an underpass at 75th Street so that we could successfully cross underneath 75th Street from the Dry Creek Community Park and get, then get into the Lagerman AHI property. The AHI property currently has about five, and a, five to five and a half miles of soft surface trails around their pro, uh, Boer County property. If then we were successful with the Doffman property, then it would be ideal too to have an underpass at Nelson Road so that we could continue from Dry Creek Community Park into the AHI under Airport Road and into the McLaughlin um, uh, Clover Basin Reservoir. So that is our, would be our first priority. Again, it's looking at regional trail connections uh, within our community and within Boulder County, Eastern Boulder County. So that's our number one priority. We already know that we're moving forward, um, expanding the St. Frank Greenway to the west. So that's our, uh, our second priority is a continuation of that priority, making certain that we've got trail connections successfully from Golden Ponds underneath Airport Road, likely up the uh, west side of Airport Road over to uh, Pella Crossing. That's our second priority and request. And our third priority request is, is again, a combination of trail planning efforts. As we were sitting down with staff members, um, we realized that we've got some gaps in community connections. And one of those is a trail corridor, trail connection, whether it's the St. Frank Greenway, uh, Coal Creek Trail, uh, uh, Dry Creek Community, um, so we're looking at the gap between um, the city of Longmont and the town of Erie. So that's included in our request, requesting that Boulder County would take on 
that, that master planning process, as well as if you flipped over to, I believe it's page 19 on your uh, map and handout, is the trail connection, the Rocky Mountain Greenway that uh, a variety of folks have been talking about for years that would make the connection from Longmont to Rocky Mountain National Park. Somewhere, you know, between here, tagging lions and somewhere, uh, maybe not directly through Button Rock Preserve, but making that Northern Boulder County connection from Longmont to Rocky Mountain National Park. So we're asking to continue that process. Uh, we were in the midst of, you know, that discussion just about flood time when a lot of priorities changed. So that is our third request is to proceed and move forward with those two master planning processes. Questions? Thoughts? Yes, Rob. Rob, you're muted. Rob, you need to unmute yourself to make your comments. I move that uh, we recommend uh, the approval of the 2021 request to Boulder County. The motion has been made. Do I have a second? Jeff Ellenbogen, thank you. Is there any discussion of the motion? Any concerns about the priorities uh, or believe uh, that there's another thing that we ought to be asking for? Okay, in that case, I would ask you to show by a show of hands uh, if you approve of this motion. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Okay, that was item six, new business. Um, we now move to items from staff uh, in no particular order. David Bell. Just wanted to give the, uh, board the, uh, the update that is in the packet, but really to us, I think one of the biggest things that we have going right now is that we have two new water resource rangers up at Button Rock. So Miles Churchill is up there. He was a seasonal when Jamie was here. And then Price Hadley's on and he is getting settled in. So we're really looking forward to that. And then we're in the process of getting the job description and advertised for John Brim's position out at Union Reservoir. Great, thank you, David. Jeff Friesner. Yeah, I have just a couple of things also. Uh, the first is a reminder to you, Katya, Rob, and Dan, that your terms are up and the council is accepting applications until November 6th if uh, you want to apply again. And uh, or if you have suggestions of other people that you'd like to uh, apply for the board, uh, please do that. Second, uh, we've worked with uh, Boulder County Public Health and have their approval to reopen the Callahan House for events, small events based on the capacities. And then finally, we will be opening the ice rink and are working on our plan for that right now. We're looking at opening uh, around November 20th and we will continue to evaluate through the season how we're doing financially to determine how long we'll keep the ice rink open for the season. And that's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Go ahead, Paige. I just wanted to say thank you for whatever you could do to open the ice rink because as a parent of a young kid trying to figure out what we're going to do in the winter outside, uh, it's, been feeling pretty limited because a lot of our social opportunities have been, you know, things that we could do outside and a lot of those are going to go away in the winter. So I really value and I think other parents will value having that resource open. And if there's anything that we can do as a board to, you know, support that resource to council, I would love for us to consider it. Okay. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, Dan Olson. Um, thanks to you both, or actually three of you, for these really extensive uh, information packets. There's a lot of info in here. I was really was great. I have various questions about individual parts. Is this something I do now or items from the board? Uh, you can go ahead and ask questions uh, on the staff reports now. Okay. Um, about tennis courts that exist now, uh, the doors have been chained open since they reopened in whenever that was, May or June. Uh, it's, I understand that the city of Boulder and in Broomfield, they shut their gates now or let us shut. And I wonder if, that, if it's time for that yet. In particular, at Pratt Park, the westmost court has a door that's chained open. Balls that go out it go directly onto Ithaca Court, a street. We joke every time we play that, oh, we won't get COVID, but we're going to hit by a car. So, it, I mean, it's a silly thing, but I wonder if it's time to start letting folks open and close gates and keep the balls in the court. Um, and then the uh, next issue might be the quail courts. The benches were removed. And I get the reasoning behind all this, but I wonder what the health departments are saying about that now. You know, it's okay. easy to leave things as they are, but they're inconvenient as they are. And maybe there's not a health reason to continue that way. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure who to bring that to, David or Jeff, or I'm not sure who that, you know, who's the guy here. David? Yeah, I'd be glad to, to weigh in on that a little bit. It's, it's, Dan, that's a good question. And I, I'll tell you right now, my staff that's out in those areas is raising the same question they hear from the users too. It's just an easy one that Boulder County really said that's what the guideline was to keep them open so there wasn't that, it was to remove touch points. And I, I get it, but we we're not consistent. That. What's that? We're not consistent throughout Boulder County. Throughout Boulder County. We're trying, you're right. So, and that's we the thing. Not. We went back and we have a weekly meeting with the, the city of Boulder and Boulder County Public Health. So it's a question we can ask again, but um, we actually had that same, that same piece internally and we are just trying to be as consistent and maybe not with other agencies, but what we'll, we'll the guidance is. And it's a pretty easy one where they say, keep them open and remove touch points. Okay. We've just been trying to stay consistent, but it's one that we definitely, on a weekly basis, we can ask those questions. So I'm, I'm glad to do that, especially since in that one, I know, I'm even go further. I think you said it goes into another court, but yeah, it, it, they end up in the street too, like you said. So Well, uh, that's the one that gets me is Pratt Park. It goes straight into the street. There's yeah. a hill there and, you know, we joke about it, but God forbid anybody really does get hit. That'd be horrible, right? You know? And I, I would say staff is definitely done, but we have okay. guidelines. We'll, we'll, we'll bring it up next week for sure. I have a couple more, if you don't mind. No, go right ahead. The, the Dickens Bridge I read about, we're going to put something that keeps people from jumping. Does that mean it'll get to be reopened? So uh, A roof or uh, I don't know what. <laughs> So I, I think, um, Dan, did you, yeah, so Steve Ransweiler is working on design, and actually it's, it's fairly um, intricate to look good. I, you know, you could have put, basically, if you see CDOT, they'd put chain link fence over the top. Yeah, right. It's horrible. Um, we didn't want that. So Steve Ransweiler actually found a local um, person that does welding, and it's basically, it looks like the design from the inside of the, the observation deck um, and I think it is the Empire State Building, but it's like some curly cues of iron work that come up that keep you from climbing up the outside and some wings that go to the other side. We will never stop everyone that wants to jump off of that. Um, but our goal really is to get it opened up so that 99% of the population that really needs it can use it um, and not punish all those people because we have a few people that just are going to continue to do that. So I think for me, and you can point to me, I was the one that really pushed hard to keep it closed just because we could not figure it out this year. It was a new structure. We needed some time to figure it out with everything else going on. It was my quickest and easiest way to try to do that. But the goal I get is, it. To, is to get it open and try to get some design work done. And we're actually pursuing a grant that might help offset some of that as well. Okay, great. I, I, I get it. I understand all the reasoning. I just saw that note in your note and it's like, yep. oh, good. I wanted to hear about it. Okay, another one. On the Resilient St. Vrain, which I guess is Steve again, uh, it talks about another closure, um, and it was like from Rogers Road 
I guess, to sunset maybe, and it talked about utilities, detours. Are you, you're going to have a detour for bikes and pedestrians, maybe along Rogers, or I, I mean, I didn't mention that, but I assume that's part of the plan. It's one thing that, you know, I gave, I think I mentioned earlier that um, staff, we had scheduled here, Steve was scheduled. I told him that there wasn't a, a reason for him to sit through the whole meeting and I'd probably cover most of it, but this is one that Steve <laughs> really does a great job on. He works very closely with the biking community. Okay. You know, these closures and these closures could last a year and a half to two years as we work through this. Um, Steve is always working to make sure that we have an alternate route. I'll tell you they're not always the best or the ideal, but um, Steve will work very closely with everyone to make sure that we have alternate routes as we're doing these phasings of the, the project. I got more. Yep. For Jeff, okay. Centennial Pool. So I try to swim masters. It's difficult. You must sign up two weeks minus one hour to get a spot. There are only 12 slots in the morning and I am number, I am spot number 18 on the wait list for next Monday. If you can believe it, there are 30 people wanting to swim. Any chance we could get a fifth lane or a sixth lane for an hour? Because the others are open. What are they, the others being open during that time? Just they are swim. used for one person to swim laps. Yep, I'll check into that. And the U.S. Swimming Association has talked to the CDC or whatever. Their current best practices is to have four people per lane rather than three. Any chance we could do that sort of thing? Not a chance. Okay, that's what and, Becky has said. That Yeah. And we've, we argued that several weeks ago with Boulder County Public Health because we were feeling the same thing. We referenced the other swimming organizations and they said, no, one per lane because you aren't keeping six feet of distance when you're swimming by each other in the lane. My argument was that you're only going by somebody for one or two seconds and they basically were adamant that we made that change. Okay. Yeah. Well, it would help masters. I guess. I mean, it's just three hours a week in the morning, you know, Monday through Friday, I'm sorry, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, six to seven. That's a total of six lap swimmers keep a total of whatever that is 18 master swimmers from swimming. It would, you know, we prefer, but I get it. You know, yeah. people complain. Finally, I haven't heard anything. We passed a bond issue. Has that been two years ago now, or was that just last year for Centennial 18. Pool upgrades? Yep. Is anything there? No. We're waiting for direction for from the city administration on whether we continue to invest in Centennial Pool or do we start working again on another rec center. It's difficult to do that right now with no public meetings and that sort of thing. But that's really the holdup is, do we spend $854,000 in a facility that we've had two studies tell us that it's about at the end of its lifespan? Yeah, I remember that argument last yeah. year at this time, we said, no, let's hold off. I didn't know yeah. what the next step was, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Dan Wolford. Oh, I'm sorry, Paige, go ahead. And then Dan, I'll call on you. Yeah, I don't think this was in the, I didn't read about this in the packet, but I was just wondering if there was any update about this situation where the kids were building the bike park on the edge of the riparian area. We talked about that and I just haven't heard any, if there's been any further action on that situation. So, so Steve Bransweiler is actually leading that um, effort. Uh, Dan Wolford with Tim Bertosti with the operations group and Steve with the planning group are looking at what we could potentially do. Um, they have a couple of ideas. The, the really goal was to reach out to the neighborhood there and, and figure out what could work. But I think, again, we recognize that our, our responsibility is to protect the current area. So probably a bit more of an inform as we work with that. Um, but with the the whole, and I hate using this, but right now we, it's still hard to figure out how you do a committee meeting um, neighborhood like that. So Steve's been working on that. But um, I would say on the on our side of it, 
Dan, maybe will give you a little bit more of an update on what the, the plans were, but uh, we've done a pretty good term scope on what we think is possible. Um, but again, it's really, really engaging with the community. Thank you, David. Uh, anything else before Dan uh, brings up his items? Dan Wolford. Did Dan have any additional information on yeah. that? I mean, I would love to hear, I and mean, maybe we could have an update at our next meeting because I was hoping if there was a public meeting or anything to hear about it so um I will I'm actually all these technologies and Steve is actually right here with me so I'll, I'll run that by him as well as as the uh the, <laughs> hey as Steve everyone, you should have come to the meeting I got to the line where we tennis courts too, so Tim is <laughs> responding to tennis courts and Steve's responding to bike paths so. <laughs> I have two um Two updates, one very brief, um, like D David had mentioned, um, we have two additional positions that are being filled. One is a full-time position, another is a temporary position as a natural resources field technician. It's amazing, you know, the, the numbers that we're seeing in the applicants for the full-time position. I have 83 applications, so we're reviewing those now uh, with hopes of trying to narrow that down to interview five or six. That's certainly a challenge. The other thing that's going on right now, and I think I've, uh, earlier this evening, I forwarded you a, um, a, a letter to Great Outdoors Colorado with a letter of support from the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. We are applying uh, for this Resilient Communities uh, grant and would love to have a letter of support from you folks. In re and you know, from GOCO, it's in response to the unprecedented disruption caused by COVID-19 that the Great Outdoors Colorado is throwing $15 million at um, one-time resilient projects uh, to help partner uh, advance outdoor recreation stewardship and land protection. So we are partnering with Wildland Restoration Volunteers for this grant that's due um, October 16th. So that's only four days. And we're requesting from GOCO uh, approximately $425,000. Included in that packet is $155,000 to make modifications to the bridge at Dickens Farm. So a number of other items, we have $45,000 to do beaver protection um, on the trees along the St. Vrain and some of our creek corridors. We've got um, $22,000 for tree plantings and, and shrubs. Uh, we have uh, an additional $25,000 um, for native seed collection. So a variety of projects that we will be working with wildland restoration volunteers. Um, and um, it's our hope to submit this on the 16th. Um, we should hear by the middle of November if we're awarded this, but we would greatly appreciate that letter of support from the Parks Board. Um, I already got comment back from Katja, so, and I greatly appreciate that. And if you would mind giving her the authority to go ahead and sign that letter or tweak it any way you want, but if we could have that so that we could send it in that package um, for the 16th, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Did anybody on the board not have an opportunity to read the letter prior to the meeting? Jeff, you did not have the opportunity? You read it? Rob, read it? Dan? Okay. Uh, Manoj, you read it? Great. Um, so anybody got any objections uh, with some minor wording changes for typos and style. Okay, can I hear a motion to um, approve the letter substantially and allow me to sign it and send it? Jeff moves, Rob seconds. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else, Dan, uh, in terms of items from staff? I'm good, thank you. Very good, thank you. Items from the board, Rob Putnam. Mm -hmm. Nothing? <coughs> Excuse me, Dan Olson. No, thank you for letting me interrupt before, I'm good. Thank you for all of your substantive comments. Paige. No, my item was going to be about the ice rink, and since you're opening it, I, you stole my thunder. So I'm excited to hear that that's happening, and um, hopefully we'll be able to continue. And also, I'm excited to 
try out the new trails. If we get funding, it'll be great to have those trail connections um, on the open space projects that you're proposing to Boulder County. So well, fingers crossed that they will look favorably on our proposal. Great. Manoj. No, I don't uh, have anything. Um, thanks to Jeff for opening the memorial building. I'm fully enjoying the badminton with a group of 15 people. Good. Jeff. Glad to hear that. Yeah. I have no items. I had two items, but I can only remember one of them. Um, but if the other one was important, it will come to me. Uh, Jeff, you mentioned um, uh, wondering if anybody knew of anybody that they might want to uh, urge to apply for an open position on the board. And I did bring this up with David and then subsequently with the city clerk, but I'll just read it into the record here. Um, I do have a potential candidate, but unfortunately this person is not eligible to serve on the board because she is not a US citizen. Um, she is a dreamer. And unfortunately uh, the city requires that you be a voting uh, citizen in order to be able to apply to the board. So I realize to any to any city boards. So I realize that this is not something that this board can solve, but I wanted to um, raise awareness. And uh, that's all I've got because I can't remember my other thing. Okay, any further items before I move on? Thank you, Dan Olson. Hey, David, you were right. McIntosh Lake cured itself of its overcrowding by draining the water and having the weather get cooler. And just so you know, that, that it will be an ongoing look at how we try to do a better job next year. Um, I, I don't know what that's going to be, but we've already had some, started some of those conversations. Okay. And by the sun rising much later. Yes. <laughs> and going down sooner, yeah. right. As a, as a person who had been going down at 530 in the morning three times a week. Um, okay, we are going to open up the public invited to be heard. The information is being displayed on the screen for those viewing from home. If you wish to comment, please dial 888-788-0099. That's a toll free number. When you are prompted, please enter the meeting ID 895-1218-1617. Participant ID is the pound sign and you will be asked to mute your computer when you call. We will now wait for five minutes. Dan Olson? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, and, go and ahead. Jerk, is, it, is it all right if one of the pieces I think with not having an in-person meeting is this little ability to, to connect with staff to the boards? Is it okay if Dan and I share a couple of pieces of information I've got from staff real quick while this is, we're waiting? Ms. Wallach, is that okay? Of course. So Dan, I, I talked to Timber a little bit here, chatted with him. And the, the keeping the gates open is a Boulder County Public Health order right now, but it's also a recommendation from the National Tennis Association. So he will take that to the meeting um, with Boulder County Public Health this week coming up. One of the things he recommended is maybe we can keep some gates that open so people have option to go through a door, but ones that open directly on the streets, maybe those are ones that have the ability to be closed so that we can That's maybe- That's smart. Get some options. So we'll, we'll bring that up and we'll look at creative ideas. But Tim right now feels that with it being a Boulder County Public Health Order and the National Tennis Association um, recommendation that it's, 
he feels is the easy one for us to stay in compliance with unless we get some other direction from them. So we'll, we'll look for other ways to do that. But um, that's why he feels that keeping him open right now is what he needs to do. But we'll bring that up this week. Okay. I promised several people I would ask. Thank you. So thank it. you. That, that all makes sense. I get it. Oh, well, I got you, David. Um, I noticed that the bathroom doors are now locked, but a couple of bathrooms, the light's still on inside. Is that a mistake? Uh, that might be a mistake. I'll check with Timber on that. So yeah, so the, I should, that should be in the minutes so too, that the, uh, the neighborhood parks, I, I believe are all being closed up now and locked and then the community like, parks later, so. Yeah, like today and tomorrow was in your note. Exactly. And uh, so the dog to- walk last night, we saw the it was door was locked at Pratt and the light was open. But today it might be different, so I don't I don't have an update. All right, we'll double check that though. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to you and Timber. By transfer that thanks to Timber, please. You bet. Chair, I'm going to stop sharing and then wait for the live stream to catch up. Thank you. And as of right now, we do not have any callers. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you to all staff, uh, especially those of you that facilitated this virtual meeting. Uh, At this point, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Manoj moves to adjourn. Can I have a second? Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all. Thank Thank you. you all. Have a pleasant evening. All right. Thank you, everyone.